I wanted to discuss the tarot deck design by Suzanne Triester, which is known as the Hexen 2.0. I like this deck. I've not um, used it to divine or anything. I don't think it was made for that. It was more of an art piece. And I've noticed that many people seem to think it was done as part of the CERN, CERN's call for artists events. But I think she made this before she was... Um, won the prize to go and be an art in residence at CERN. I hope I'm not wrong on that, but I've just heard that many people say that she made this tarot deck as part of her CERN art residency. I'd love to speak to her to find out whether that's true or not, but from what I gather, she made this first. So this Hexon 2.0 is a very colourful deck of cards, and it starts off with Aldous Huxley as the fool. Now Aldous Huxley we all know as uh, a writer of Brave New World and um, the Doors of Perception, you know the Doors group named themselves after that quote that he used. So he was like um, the mystic that brought different ideas, different sci-fi stories to the world in the 20th century. And this is what this tarot deck seems to cover, the 20th century and beyond and before, um, because it's looking at scientists and mystics throughout the ages. Now many of the cards in it deal with certain people, but some are to do with places or events, like the Macy conferences. And what it, these cards seem to be telling us is that artificial intelligence is coming cybernetics was the plans of the future and this is something I'm concerned about myself as you know from my book Monkey Mind Robot Body I've been looking at what's going to happen to us in the future with artificial intelligence and where is transhumanism going to come into all this so this artist Suzanne Trister seems to be looking at the fears the worries the concerns but also the hopes of these people that have been involved in the evolution of humanity, whether it's evolving into a um, like a military state, or whether it's being evolved by whoever these bigwigs are, you know, conspiracy theory, into looking after us humans, the rest of us, the lay people, or whether they're just trying to control us. Um, I found it quite interesting that the Empress card is represented with lots of different um, words and what they are is the names for all the secret services in all the different countries. So she's looking at all the way that our governments, the elite, try to watch over us in us lay people and are supposed to care for us. So she wants to look at what's going on with civilization, and it's how to free ourselves from all this, you know, control. For example, the emperor is Digenes of Sinope, the Greek philosopher who says civilization is re regressive. And this seems to be the alternative between the cards. Some are about people who's trying to teach us how to be free individuals, where other cards are about the people that are trying to control us and make us all come together in this perhaps new world idea. I can understand why many people, for example, the Macy people want to control us because by controlling us then hopefully we'll become in, in a strange way. Everybody's looked after by this one world government as for example on um, card number eight, Justice. She talks, or she puts the quote from Bernard Russell from his scientific outlook about how war can only be abolished by the establishment of a world government. Which is what this new world order is supposed to be about, to make us all the same. There'd be no more differences, no more countries, no more nations. Instead, we'd all... Well be under control of this new world order but then hopefully that would stop war because then there would be no reason for war because we're all the same. 
sounds a bit strange for us humans because we're all individuals really so we're going to look at card number five actually which is about the hierophant and on this one she has put down lieutenant colonel jim channon and he had put together the first earth battalion field manual 1979 which all was all about trying to have a vision a visionary mindset for everyone he wanted to do simple living an ethical marketplace uh, renewable energy non-lethal warfare in other words to make the earth more of a paradise for us all to live on together in a nice friendly loving way you know in this he was calling us uh, the science of conscious evolution so this is what I like about Triester's tarot card. She's trying to show the people that we're trying to be, like the mystics, what some people might call the hippies of this world, because this was back in the 1960s, for example, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Channon. You know, she has cards from Timothy Leary and people like that. Trying to bring hope and perhaps, in a way, expand the mind through LSD or, or not, people can live a freer world, can live together in a free world, and can live lovingly uh, together in a free world, not caught up in a new world order where we're told what to do, we're told what to wear, we're told, well, everything, how to be. And who wants to be told how to be? Most people want to be free enough to think for themselves. Now the cards go on to discuss many of the people from the Macy conferences, for example, Margaret Mead, Gregory Bateson, Norbert Weiner, who was, of course, the man who wrote God and Gollum, the beginning of the cybernetic society. And I thought it was quite interesting that her card number 13, the death card, was John von Neumann, who's uh, one of the founders of the quantum mechanics and he's also a Macy Conference Corps member. So she's showing us the people that have brought forward the computerising of our lives. You know, nowadays we've got our mobile phones, our laptops, you know, everything's become cybernetic in a way. And who knows how the future is going to be of, are we going to become cybernetic? Are we going to become the cyborgs? When really we want to keep I think this is obviously my idea of humans. We want to stay human. We want to stay organic. We want to, we should be working with the planet, working with the world, not being materialistic. And she, some of her cards do cover some of that kind of thing, like the uh, levelers. She discusses how uh, the cards show the idea of in the past how people wanted to work with the land still. You've got, for example, Gerald Wynne Stanley. He's, um, he was the man that put forward communal ownership of public lands and that we should all be working on the land, social economic organisation in small agrarian communities. You know, he could see that materialism was coming. So some of her cards, such as, for example, the moon that covers transhumanism, which is quite interesting since the moon normally is the, uh, the dreamlike state. And I suppose maybe that's what this is going to be, the dreamlike state of the future. Transhumanism means we're not going to evolve ourselves as organic humans and perhaps wake up. Instead, we go and become caught up in a, a cybernetic body. And instead of developing ourselves, we just would, well, what, what would change in a cybernetic body? Would we be able to evolve? I don't know. I think we'd get used to being in a body that did everything for us. And would we be connected to the AI? So then we'd be being led along. We wouldn't be free. Whereas the sun card is depicted with an, uh, a tent with an end to industrial civilization and the destruction of technology eradication of all forms of domination because we should be free beings to be able to do what we want I'm not saying an, um, an, a society of anarchy but if we all learn to work together then we could live in a better world if we all learn to accept each other 
and not be concerned about what another person's gender is or another person's religion is or another person's beliefs because we should respect each other's beliefs and values. Now tarot cards normally are telling a story especially in the major arcana the decks 0 to 21 and I thought this story that she's put across in this tarot deck is very interesting since it starts off about being the mystical magical side and then coming into the rather serious one world government side and the people that have been putting forward the computer side and the cybernetic side and then to end with number 20 which is judgment <clears throat> in the tarot deck being a beautiful plant-like card of ethics because ethics is important and that's what's beginning to be forgotten a lot in this world is the ethics but what did make me chuckle was her card number 21 the world got three words on it ww1 standing for world war one ww2 standing for world war two and then www which is what seems to control our world now the world wide web the minor tarot deck is divided into four cups wands hearts and pentacles or coins where this one we've got from Suzanne Triester is chalices pentacles wands and swords. So if we look at the chalices first, which is the cups, the offerings, some might say it comes from the emotional side, which is quite interesting since cup number two is the summer of love. It looks very um, hippie-ish, but then next to it, on the same card, it starts talking about the civil rights movement. So the, the chalices seems to be showing the beginning of revolution but also evolution we've got the astrolabe the astronomical computer that was made back in the well in the uh, some say from 150 BC but was used in the medieval times and earlier which is the computer to predict the location and position of the Sun moon planets stars etc and help people to travel about and then the, the chalices continues on with the first a uh, robot made, or the first clock actually, the first castle clock by Al Jazali in 1136 to 1206. So he was the Muslim inventor and engineer. Though she continues about with H.P. Lovecraft and his quote about the coming of the Dark Age, but how to try and avoid it, and how the sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little, but some day the piercing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality, which is kind of what's happening. We're concerned about uh, artificial intelligence and transhumanism. Is it there to work for us or against us? So the chalices continues in a timely fashion, covering different people that have brought quotes, philosophy, ideas about work and how we should be all working together, society and how can we make it a utopia here on this earth. It ends with Ada Lovelace as the Queen of Chalices. She was the mathematician and one of those that helped develop the first computer program. Well they said she is the first computer programmer. So it's showing that it's offering us the future could work with computers, but will they work with us or against us? The next set is the pentacles, which look a bit uh, dark and destructive, showing us how the intercloud works and the global data is coming through our, well, taking over our world as cybernetics and the systems of intelligence gathering feedback and behaviour control spy on us. So in some ways her cards are like a warning about how the government government's trying to control us and uh, she, her cards you have to really look at not just the art but all the writing that's going on inside them. She again carries on bringing out uh, people's quotes 
people's concerns and people's ideas of how to make it a better world. Wands, which is the creating set of the tarot deck, looks at, well, again, different people and different uh, cultural ideas. But it's got a lot to do with that creation, because that's what wands do. They create the spell and make things happen. So it's about ideas of how we could make things better, visions. It's got you know a nice card about William Blake, one of my favourite artists. The Eight of Wands also has one of my favourite authors, William Gibson. And his books were always about what the future could be, about cyberspace, which is you know happening. The virtual environment is a very good chance it's going to take us over. Um, he discusses a lot about the effect of the computer networks on human beings and how we're taken in by them. So with the LSD cards that keep coming up, I think he's trying to, she's trying to tell us here about how LSD, for some people, helped free them and opened their minds. Obviously, you know, Timothy Leary and uh, looked into all this. But there's also the concerns of it can take you to dark places. Yeah. If you do too much acid at some point, you're going to have a bad trip. So the Wands continues discussing about technology and anti-technology. Because not everybody wants to become part of the computer system or caught up in the, this network that's going around. You know, some people have stayed free from it all. And one of those is John Serzan, the anarcho-primitivist. She discusses a lot. In fact, there's two cards that I've come across already on Fyodor Kaczynski, the Unibobber. And she's written out his manifesto on the Knight of Wands, the psychology of modern leftism, feelings of inferiority over socialisation, the power process, surrogate activities, autonomy, sources of social problems, and so on. The King of Wands is, of course, the wonderful Nikola Tesla, who I myself wrote a book about, Tesla and Twain. Good old Tesla, the man who wanted to bring free electricity to the people. He knew that the people came first, not money. And that's why he's king. So the sword stick looks at the cyber wars, which was very interesting, especially about the MK Ultra. You know, okay, the government still keep quiet about all that kind of thing, but we know that the CIA and other secret departments have been working on all kinds of things and again it's like a warning these cards aren't they that we we can't trust our governments and I'm, I don't know if that is what the artist is trying to say but that's how I'm reading it it goes on in this one about mental health now swords is about fighting so maybe it's fighting for the rights and to fighting for um, to make people wake up and look at the problems of what's going on in this world and it probably is to do with being controlled you know, we're not free people. We don't work with the land anymore. Five of Swords, don't be evil, Google. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, and I do advise you, if you can, go and find these cards. Cause just reading through them and looking deeply into them, as you should with any occult study, does bring out, well, realities. The realities of what's going on in this world. You know, as Martin Heidegger, the German philosopher, said, who is on the Six of Swords card, the question concerning technology. Seven of Swords is an interesting one. It's like a seance, but it's called the cybernetic seance. And she's put all the uh, members of the Macy conferences and the Macy attendees together in a seance, around a seance table, which is interesting because I've been looking into all this idea of how the dark side can come through computers and through um, you know many people are looking at the idea of CERN being opening up to the portal of hells and things like this and it makes you wonder is this what this is all about and if you look back at Ada Lovelace being one of the founders of computers or making the first computer program she was apparently involved with the Orphic Circle who were again doing seances and uh, trying to contact the other dimension so there's some kind of link here and I think Triesta's got it, and she's trying to subtly tell the world we need to be careful of what we're dabbling with, with computers, 
with the dark side. The occult and cybernetics are definitely linked in some way. So her swords deck is looking at all the uh, the wars that have been going on and the problems with places like DARPA, the US Defense Advanced Research Agency, and the idea of misusing technology for control. And she goes, well, explains a lot about how the internet's interplanetary and connects everything, but it also gives those that are in control the chance to be able to watch over us. And as the Queen of Swords is not a person, it's a set of drones. And there are drones everywhere nowadays. And what are they watching? What are they listening to? Us. And the last card of the King of Swords, Timothy Leary, and his eight circuit model of consciousness. And it is consciousness that we need. Not necessarily his idea, but, you know, I'm sure his idea is as good as any others. But if each person can look at what their consciousness is, find their conscience, then maybe in some way we'll be able to break free of all this control and become free individuals that can live together in a utopian world that's ideal for everybody. Man, woman, child, animal, bird, fish, you know, you name it, tree life, plant life, everything. We must be able to live in a better way. <laughs>